I'm I'm going to read from a speech because I've got I've got like data to work with here, so it's very serious. As you can tell by my <laughs> wonderful first slide. Okay, um, my name is Emily. I'm a first year PhD student from the University of Sheffield. Uh, my PhD is on sexuality, gender, and religion in video games. Uh, this is my second time at Video Brain, so thank you to Jake and the team for having me again uh, and for graciously lifting the ban on talks about Bioware games and dating. <laughs> I feel very special. Um, I'm here to discuss how dating sexy space lizards and medieval minotaurs in Bioware games has paved the way for more diverse representations of Christ figures in video games and media in general. I'll mention up front that this is new data, new research, so it's still in the early stages and open to change. So to discuss how games, and specifically Bioware games, are making Christ figures more diverse, we should firstly talk about representations of Jesus, or Christ figures, and how they're identified. As a means for comparison to video games, I'm using the media most known to provide examples of Christ figures, film. Okay. So Adele Reinhardt notes in her book, Bible and Cinema, that Christ figures appear in films of virtually every genre in commercial cinema. And they can take numerous guises, saints, priests, women, clowns, fools, madmen, outlaws, children, and even actors who play objects. There is debate within biblical and film study circles as to what defines a Christ figure or a Christ figure film. Often they're defined as a narrative in which a character is depicted as having a life story similar to Jesus. So we're talking miracle birth, a leader of a political religious movement, betrayal, sacrifice for the good of all, etc., etc. It can also be the portrayal of a character with attributes most often associated with Jesus, such as being the son of God, the human, defi the human divine dichotomy. Even initials can be an identifier, as is the case with John Connor from Terminator. Christ figures are everywhere in film. Some of them you may, may know already, like Neo from the Matrix films. Neo, the literal one, is a prophesied saviour with miraculous abilities who, spoilers, sacrifices himself for the good of all. And if the connection to Jesus wasn't completely obvious already, the Wachowskis make it plain when they depict Neo dying in the well-known Christ's pose of crucifixion. Then there's Harry Potter, again, a prophesied saviour sent to ward off evil by sacrificing himself. Unlike Neo, he, spoilers, gets to complete the full Jesus cycle and resurrect. He's surrounded by a group of loyal followers or disciples. Unfortunately, one of the noted aspects of filmic Christ figures is their lack of gender, racial and sexual diversity. As Reinhardt notes, Christ figures appear in a diverse amount of genres and roles, but for that, for many of them, that's where diversity ends. To be fair, some of the examples of diverse Christ figures are quite high profile. Characters such as female Christ figures of Ellen Ripley or Katniss Everdeen, or the species-based diversity of Christ figures like Aslan, Optimus Prime, and the T-800. Really, there's, there's articles written on this shit. Um, I've read them. Um, whilst it's true that Christ figures can and have been depicted as any gender, race, sexuality, or even species, the truth of the matter is that overwhelmingly, Christ figures in film are presented as white, heterosexual males. So, as part of my PhD research, I compiled a list of Christ figures from multiple sources. I want to stress that this is by no means an exhaustive list of every Christ figure in film. Rather, it's a list derived from both Reinhardt's work, IMDb lists, and the extensive amount of data that can be found on tvtropes.org. <laughs> it's a great site. Uh, what results is a list of characters repeatedly identified by multiple sources. And the results are as follows. <laughs> yeah, pie chart. Um, many a pie chart. Uh, so, in a group of 48 
film Christ figures, 6.2%, that's three, could be identified as BME, whereas 87.5, 42 out of 48, were identified as white. As far as gender is concerned, the ratio between male and female, the only genders which are present within the group, is split with 10 out of the 48 or 20% being female and 37 out of 48 or 77 being male. Lastly, depictions of diverse sexuality, uh, anything other than heterosexual, are pretty low if non-existent. 83% of film Christ figures included in the list were depicted as heterosexual, with the remaining 16.6 .6 being made up of instances in which no sexuality was depicted or defined. Now, this is where video games come into the equation. With film examples of Christ figures are male, white and heterosexual by an overwhelming majority, the numbers change when compared to Christ figures found within video games. Using a similar compilation technique, I assembled an admittedly much smaller uh, list of Christ figures within games. So, whilst the figure of BME Christ figures in games is less than film, 4.3 to film 6.2, there is an opportunity for diversity provided by player choice. Oh, why hasn't that come up? There it is. There you go. Cool. Um, so, yeah, there's an opportunity provided by player choice that allows for 17% share of potential racial diversity. Also, there is a much larger percentage of races that fall into the other category. In gender comparison... So... Uh, in gender comparison, games proved to be dramatically different from film. In games, 34% of Christ figures are female, up from films 20%. Again, player choice provides a 17% opportunity for figures to change either way. Males make up 47% of Christ figures in games, down from 77% in film. Preset heterosexuality... Pop that in... Uh, sexuality that you cannot change or give any input to accounts for 52% of Christ figures in games, down from films 83%. Even if you ignore the percentages that account for player choice or input, you can see that video games allow for examples of Christ figures who are dramatically different from those previously seen in film. So, what about player choice? This is where Bioware and the romance options that are so crucial to Bioware games' narratives come into play. In both Mass Effect series and Dragon Age Inquisition, the lead character, whichever way they are played, can be identified as a Christ figure. Both these characters are leaders of a small group of devoted followers. Dragon Age Inquisitions gives, gives the player nine different characters to act as a companion and three advisors, which rounds up to a nice figure of 12 disciples. Both Shepard and the Inquisitor are singled out by originally unknown forces and marked as special or unique. Both become messianic figures to many they interact with. It's possible with both games for the player to refuse this status... But in both cases, many NPCs will ignore the attempt at modesty and keep on calling you by messianic names. Both the Inquisitor and Shepard are given multiple opportunities within the game's narrative to sacrifice themselves for others. Whilst Mass Effect is pretty heavy-handed with the Space Jesus metaphor, especially in ME3 when Shepard is referred to by a title that is often used for Jesus, the Good Shepard, Dragon Age Inquisition's writers dial it back a degree and even include a dialogue option for the Inquisitor in which they can rebuke others for attributing messianic status to them. It's not like I died and came back. Through the inclusion of both expansive character customization, except when hair's concerned in Dragon Age Inquisition, <laughs> Not enough hair. Uh, and varied romance options. Bioware games are unique in their ability to provide the opportunity for a Christ figure that is both racially and sexually diverse. Gender diversity is also affected by player customization, but sadly we only have binary, binary representations so far. It's important to address the fact that these are only the option to create a diverse Christ figure. 
There is no game that I know of so far, and I admit one could definitely exist, where you can play a Christ figure as diverse as the ones that Bioware gives you the opportunity to play in titles such as Mass Effect and Dragon Age. I personally have struggled with this idea. Can I truly champion, the, champion these games as diverse examples of Christ figures if that diversity is dependent on players choosing to perform it? Unfortunately, Bioware does not share a good deal of player data, so we cannot know how many people have actually played with which configuration of Shepard or the Inquisitor. Reddit surveys such as the one compiled by user Beasley Bob which polled over a 1,000 Inquisition players, have told us that players favoured female elven mages the highest, male Kunari rogues the lowest, and that for females, Cullen was the most popular romance choice, Blackwall the least, and for males, Cassandra, my personal favourite, the highest, and Iron Bull the least. I know, boo. He's great. He loves everyone. Um... How many female players played as males? How many males romanced Dorian, the most popular companion? How many players romance multiple characters? We simply do not know. Adrienne Shaw discusses in her seminal text, Gaming at the Edge, the difference between media such as film and that of games. The difference is interactivity, yes, but not as previously explained by gaming scholars. Games are not different because they include interactivity, they are different because they must be interacted with. What does this say for player choice-based diversity? It's my belief that if a game provides an opportunity for diversity, that should count in some way as the game expressing diversity. Unfortunately, we are not yet at a place in which games depict diverse characters as default. But Bioware does provide us the opportunity for however little that should count. By providing the player with the choice of gender, race, and sexuality, Bioware games allow for greater amount of main character diversity than their opposition. But Mass Effect and Dragon Age Inquisition do one step more. These games depict a main character who, however gendered or sexually or racially identified, they still retain their programmed narrative that allows us to identify them as Christ figures. And by allowing the player to choose the character's race, gender, and sexuality, they allow for the possibility of an extremely diverse Christ figure. In Mass Effect, via the character of Jane Shepard, you can play the story of a black lesbian female who also happens to be the savior of the entire universe. In Dragon Age Inquisition, you can play the story of a white Kunari male who has a sexual relationship with a male Tevinta mage, and who also happens to be the Herald of Andraste, who, bonus points, is herself another example of a diverse Christ figure in that she's a married female. Diversity in Bioware games is manifested in two ways, through who you choose to be and who you choose to date. Even if you don't romance anyone, there is still the opportunity for racial and gender diversity. Several years ago, Bioware released an infographic claiming that 18% of players played Mass Effect as FemShep. Not only does this data seem oddly low, didn't we all claim to play as FemShep due to the superior voice acting? But it also accounts for players, it only accounts for players who fully completed the game. As the wife of a player who has yet to finish Witcher 3, Dragon Age Inquisition and Final Fantasy XV, this seems a bit of an oversight if Bioware is seeking an accurate representation of all players. Hopefully, we will eventually get better data from game companies, data that can show us how many people actually choose these diverse options. However, even without the data, we can already see that video games, through character customization and in-game options like romance quests, are paving the way for true diversity and representation of my messianic figures. Games, often depicted as a lesser media, a baser media, are miles ahead of their older, more revered siblings.